the stream because you know nobody wants to hear the well, what if talking. an npc does well i mean an if NPC. an npc is talking in the third person about themselves then sure i'll shoot but before that no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna act crazy I like crazy as an NPC, just, you know, not as myself. <laughs> Welcome to Tuesday Night Jackals uh, on the Iconic Production stream. I was about to say welcome to Tuesday Night Torg on a completely different stream, but this will be the final um, part of our Cult of Sanan um, adventure that we've been doing for Jackals, a Bronze Age role-playing game. Put out by Osprey Games, written by... You guys are the best. Look at all those beautiful copies of Jackals. Um, so, we're just going to get right into it. When we last left off, the group had discovered uh, that there was far more than meets the eye going on. That someone is hunting down, and not only was hunting down, but is uh, trying to end... The Cult of Lycos, this, this order dedicated to um, civilization and order and the preservation of kind of this, uh, this demigod's uh, deeds on behalf of the Melconi people. And so they, um, woohoo, uh, hello to everyone in the chat. Congratulations to Druid ph uh, Philosophy. She's subscribed far more than even I have. Woot woot! Um, hey! And Evan is in there as well. So, uh, gathering supplies and information and allies, you guys have decided to head out into the north in order to um, find out where this cult is located, maybe what is going on, um, and try and bring an end to this, uh, this attack on one of the cults in uh, the city of Crow Ryla. So, I believe we were going to start off with survival checks as you headed north across the uh, the plains and into the forest. So, Jackals uses uh, a travel mechanic uh, to represent just the, uh, the rigors and the vagaries of travel in the Bronze Age. Uh, yes, I got to use vagaries on stream. Vagarings, and then last week I think it was Flensing that uh, I appreciated the chat picking up on. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a travel check. So travel checks are governed by survival. And if you're wondering where that is, if you're following along at home in your book, that is on page. Really tried to stretch that out as long as possible because I haven't been able to find it yet. On page 73, I believe. There we go. 73. All right. So this is a, uh, a travel across the plains for the first two days. And then the remainder of the travel will be across the forest. So what I need from everyone is I need two survival checks. Traveling across the plains is a normal check. While traveling through the forest is a difficult check made at minus 25%. So I've got Athenia. Toara. Mariette and Famia. Plains and Forest. Uh, Athenia, what did you get on your two rolls? On um, the first one, I rolled a one. And on the second one, I rolled a two. Uh, so your dice are clearly primed uh, for uh, Rune Quest tomorrow night. Sadly, yeah, yeah. those are just regular successes as opposed to critical successes. Although, yeah. don't worry, chat. I have definitely been looking at and, and keeping an eye on my schedule in hopes that I may be able to run some Glorantha with people here, with some of you, uh, some of our patrons this summer, because I know that's something that people have requested. And gosh darn it, uh, I, uh, I am a GMing addict and will continue to run games until my body gives out. Uh, so, all right, so Athenia, you got two successes. Tawara, how are, how is, how are you doing traveling across the... Uh, the plains and the forest. Uh, succeeded the first with a 28 and the second with a four. Nice. <laughs> Mariette. Um, Mariette hates traveling. Okay. Uh -huh. And therefore she's failed both of her rolls. <laughs> only regular failures, though. Not right, only failures. regular failures. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, and then Famia, what did you get? 
palindrome. So pass the first one with a 17 and failed the second one with a 71. <laughs> All right. Oh. So in travel, Rook, good to see you, buddy. Um, virtually, I guess. Um, so the way this works is if you fail on a travel check, you suffer metal damage. It's fatigue. None of you are overly encumbered, so you don't need to worry about any additional metal damage. But this sort of drains your resources. It, it, it means you're you're exhausted. Your fighting spirit is is lowered. So, uh, Mariette, as you failed, oh no, as you failed both checks, you take five points of metal damage. Uh, Famia, you only failed the second one, so you will take three points of metal damage. And as we've had three failures, I get to roll an encounter. So the way it works is every failure increases the encounter chance by one. So I do I do miss Mykonos and his his mad honey, which will appear in the next Jackal's books. Like all of the rules for Mad Honey will be in the next uh Jackal's books. It may be being sold by a Malconi merchant named <laughs> Mykonos. Who knows? Not as if we can control what goes in the next book. All right. All right. So as you guys travel, I need. Uh, we're gonna make. We're gonna put this on Jenny. Jenny, can you uh, give me a D one hundred roll? Just be something interesting, guys. Come on. Um, that's a five. All right. What was that earlier? All right. So, about three days into the journey, Marietta is, is lagging behind. At this point, Famia is still just powering through. Starting to get a little, uh, a little winded as you were cresting hills in the forest to the north of Crow Ryla. As you head toward, um what is hopefully one day will be a new colony um or a new yeah a new colony up from crow ryla right this is sort of how um athenia you know this is how this works um in the west when cities get too large um the elders of the city basically fund a a new colony um, in fact, that's what's going on far to the west. Uh, they have sort of expanded out into um, the steppe and uh, drier territory to the north of Melcone, and they are establishing several colony cities, uh, interacting with a group of steppe warriors known as um, the Sinaeans. But either they are pan Melcone, where they'll just say, hey, we've got a new colony site, any city can send colonists here or they have um right this one is specifically like Eskinois colony uh like a child colony so that's kind of what what they're hoping to have here but the terrain starts breaking up uh the hills of the uh the Vorivana kind of uh intersect with the edge of the forest that you're following as you're kind of following this map following directions given to you by um Callisto and the first thing you notice is during the second day um, into the forest, things are starting to get quiet. The sounds of the birds and the trees are muted. Even your footfalls seem to be strangely uh, muted. You can still hear the cracks of uh, leaves and branches and, and the humus of the floor. Um, but it, it, it's strangely dulled. And as you crest, um, as you kind of come, you're following the map, you kind of come around the, tr the trail, you can see that there is definitely a clear path to the north following the directions that you are headed. But off to the, the west, you can see there is an overgrown, uh, it almost looks like, a, like an old stone path. And while up ahead you can hear the sounds of the forest, sort of behind you you can hear the sounds of the forest, muted as they are. To the west you hear nothing. In the great words of the scholar Ivanis, it's quiet. Too quiet. 
to the west. Restar, good to see you, bud. Um, I'm going to draw my sword and pause and wait for Mariette um, to catch up to the rest of us. And ask, do we want to go look at that? Um, do you think that's wise? Wise? Maybe not. Does that sound fun? Because here's the problem, is we're walking along this path that villagers, merchants, families will also follow. That's fair. So maybe it's not wise to go investigate this, but leaving it alone might Just be someone else. Just invite to other people. Yeah. At hmm. least we can look and maybe leave? Yeah. Sure. That sounds fine. <laughs> I've been getting tired of just walking along this way anyway, so it would be nice to have a, a side a side venture, perhaps. Um, Tawara and Famira, what do you think? Can I peer down this pathway and kind of see if I see anything disturbed? Okay. Just take a look down the path as I'm thinking about it. Sure, give me a perception check. Success. And then, Famia, are you doing anything while they're having this discussion? Uh, probably just keeping an eye out. The silence is uncomfortable. The silence is uncomfortable. Just keeping an eye out. And I'm fine investigating if, if the group thinks that's the best course of action. Yes, and my silence is in one part, because that makes sense. Um, uh, so, uh, Tara, as you sort of look down the the the, you can see that they're definitely uh, 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 stones. Almost, as you kind of look at it, these stones look like the path is would have once been wide enough for several wagons to travel out of the mountains across this forest, but they are only three stones wide like you as you kind of look down the path you can see that this was once a, a cyclopean road but you also see someone in the shadows of the trees basing away from you holding a spear above their head you can see the light glittering just at the far end of, uh, just before like the trees really kind of once again break up your vision. Um, kind of standing to the edge of the road, spear raised, you can see the light uh, glittering off the spearhead. A shield raised as if about to um, be struck. And as long as you watch, person doesn't move. They are, they are holding completely still. I think, Athenia, I do think we should check it out. There's something down there. There's a person, maybe a statue. I'll kind of try to point it out to everybody else. Is it a statue? You can't tell from where you're standing. It's it, it when uh, when Tawara points it out, the rest of you don't really see it at first, and then eventually you you see um, the person again, ch just far enough out that the trees are really starting to once again block your field of vision. Maybe one of us sneaks closer i'm really good at that i'm really know. bad at that 
I could probably get closer and take a look, see what it is. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll try to sneak up towards it and take a closer look. All right, give me a stealth check. Come on. Don't get too close. Uh, success. All right. So, uh, Tawara finds that moving silently through this forest is even easier when the forest seems to be muting all of the sounds that you would be making. And Tawara, you get within hands, like arms reach of this thing. And you can see it is a it is a woman in full battle panoply. Um, large uh, crested helm. Um, uh, scales sewn into what seem to be a, or, uh, a um, like a linen uh, under underweave, you know, kind of linen armor uh, surmounted with scales. But you clearly see, like, bird droppings on the shield on the back of the helm. And uh, you don't hear anything. Like, it is completely silent here. But you start to pick out five, six more of these. You can see they're broken they like broken across uh, the forest floor where trees have kind of grown up and, and, and torn these apart. But as you look, you're kind of putting it all together. There were probably nearly a hundred of these warriors. They're the, the ske- Some of them are still full. You can see some missing arms, legs where the stone has broken away. This one seems in remarkably good good shape uh, but you don't recognize the armor um, there's a there's a strange sunburst on um, on the shields there seems to be the sunburst is flanked by uh, two women uh, kind of with their heads bowed towards the sun and their and their uh, their heads cowled and and shrouded um, if you want to give me a lore check, you could see what you may know of these people. Yes, please. Oh, lore is a success. Uh, they are all in defensive postures, as Restar asked. Good question. Um, you recognize these um, from the descriptions of the Hulathi. Um, the the uh, warriors that came out of the sea, uh, they're referenced in the Shalifar. They're far more known among like the Malconi and the Gare, uh, mainly because they, they, they came out of, uh, out of the west, landed here, kind of established three grand kingdoms, which were swallowed up and destroyed when the Takan kind of took over everything. You recognize these, um, these as Hulathi warriors, all seemingly turned to stone, as well as uh, they all bear the symbol that that sunburst with the two uh, women on either side of it is the symbol of the royal kingdom of Luca. Okay. Would I have any idea about things that turn people to stone? Well, as in you this look way? around, you can see they're kind of in a depression, and most of them seem to be on the eastern side of the depression weapons out and as you look there is a there is a large dead spot just beyond you you can see where the trees have started to reclaim the area but these trees are stunted uh bearing just very few leaves and and fruit but it looks like something as you kind of look around because you succeeded on your perception check some of the statues have fallen backwards away from that dead spot, it looks like something terrible happened here. Okay. I'll just kind of tiptoe my way back and let everybody else know what I found. It takes, you, you back out almost three quarters of the distance before you start to hear anything. It is... 
We're talking, it is so quiet, you can't hear the breath rasping in your lungs or past your nostrils. Like, there is no sound there. Right as I'm about to, like, cross, because I would probably have realized when it started being quiet on the way in, can I, like, kick a stone or try to make a sound and see if I can make sound? Uh, Sure. Like, right as I'm on the edge of it. Uh, <laughs> you... You do. Um, you can... Uh, you throw something. You throw okay. your rock to see if, if, it, if it lands. And it doesn't make a noise. But almost immediately... You hear the sound... Of wings flapping. Oh, great. <laughs> None of the rest of you hear the sound. You see you see Tawara pick up a stone and throw it. It makes no sound whatsoever, but you see her look as if... Um, and you can see coming, kind of flying out from that dead spot, you can see uh, six large owls that have, oh. like, they have horns coming out of the their uh the heads uh of um these gray birds that are just massive in their wingspan they're i mean they are about the size of your torso tawara and they are flying right toward you oh boy i'm gonna back out of the quiet area be like we should go now meanwhile outside the area as soon as tawara gets about uh, 12 yards away from you. Where'd she go? You can, you can, you think you can see her. There's definitely something moving in the shadows, but it is almost wraith-like. So wait, Tawara disappeared? She didn't disappear. She just became harder to focus on. It's almost as if, as you looked at her, you're... The best way to explain it is, you know how, you know that feeling when you see somebody and you're pretty sure you, you know them, but you can't recall who they are? Like, uh -huh. you keep having to remind yourself, no, wait, that's Tawara. What's Tawara? Who's Tawara? No, no, that, that is Tawara. I mean, she doesn't spend a lot of time, right? She goes in and then comes back out. Um, is she coming towards us still? Yep. Okay. But she's going weird and misty? Uh, she seems to be solidifying as she comes closer back toward you. Okay. Um, not to be rude or anything, Tora, but, uh, you're gonna have to verify it's you. <laughs> um, Yep, it's me. Uh, we need to go now. There's flying monster birds. Let's go. Just what somebody who wasn't Tawara would say. Um, exactly. Mar Maria, give me a culture own roll, please. Alrighty. As you all hear um, the, this this uh, very forlorn, desperate um, animal cry, like 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 the sound of a uh, an owl, if that owl was somehow conveying all of the loss that it had seen in the world. Maria, you recognize that sound. There are temples in Gare that keep these owls. What? They are, they are known as the Ukuku, the horned owls of Anu. Uh, they bear the souls of the dead to the silent lands, to the afterlife. Oh. Okay. And do they also guard, like, portals between the afterlife and the this life? Guard. Or, like, Attracted patrol? to, like, vultures to uh, a carrion field? You know. Same, same thing. Okay. Um, so that's probably the sort of place that if you, if you touch a statue, poof, you're in the Deadlands. Um. 
as a player. I didn't player. touch a statue. Okay. I touched a rock. We should go. Yes, Jenny's having having PTSD flashbacks to the other Jekyll's campaign she was in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, but as a as a Garwa, I know that uh, we don't want to go to the Deadlands while we're still alive because that's a terrible idea. So, <laughs> chop chop, let's go. Let's uh, shift it just a little bit here. Maybe we put a pin in this and come back later. Yeah, maybe we put up a sign that says "Don't go here." Um, later. Yeah. Do Let's we go. see the owls, or do we just hear them? You just hear them, and Tawara, as soon as you sort of cross back into where you can hear things, you feel kind of the beating of their wings, but... Cool. They don't seem able to, like, follow me back to where there's sound, when or... When you look behind you, you don't see them anymore. Okay. We should still probably go. Um, I'm just gonna do a walk around Tawara, poke her a couple of times, make sure she's actually solid and corporeal, has uh, all the appropriate reactions. The look on her face and her reaction to your poking lets you know that she is definitely both uh, corporeal and as at least as easily agitated with you as Tawara typically is. Perfect. It's her. Let's go. He just asked. He didn't have to poke me. He could have well, lied. He Not that you would lie, but you know. Can we put up a sign or something so other people don't go down there? The path seems pretty over um, overgrown. Uh, while the path that you were traveling north to the new town location seems well used. But if you would like to try and come up with a sign... I was gonna say the best sign I think would be to get two uh, skinny trees and put one of these across the uh, path. Yeah, but you know what a do not enter sign really says is like, please come in here. There's cool stuff back here. So either put an X up or try to obscure the trailhead even more. Yeah. They're I'm perfect. definitely a fan of that. I'm definitely a fan of that second idea obscuring the presence more okay sure let's let's try to pull some things over and hide it a little bit better yeah okay. i will help with that okay. all right that takes you about the rest of uh takes you seriously like the rest of the day uh to get that done uh exhausting for Mia, just a little bit more definitely exhausting marriott you don't know where she gets the energy to do this um, but as you, as you continue on your journey north, are you heading more towards the, the site of the new town, or are you following the map, kind of veering more east towards the foothills of the mountains? I think we want to follow the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I vote for map. Yeah. Okay. Well. Let me grab my Clash Point tokens from the shelf for no good reason. Just, you know. You don't need they those. Be useful later. You don't need those. I don't need those. You don't need those. You don't need Clash Points. No, we need ours. You just don't need it. Oh, okay. I see how that is. It's totally. Yeah. That's okay. I know Restar will give me Clash Points and Fate Points for my, uh, for my characters. He's, he's on my side. Follow the map, followed by a sharp left. Yeah, and then a uh, second star on the right, uh, straight on till morning. All the way till morning, yeah. Um, all right, so about five days out of Corilla, um, you guys approach the foothills of the Vorivana. They they do not tower above you. Uh, on the At the distance, they look like squat... Um, almost stunted things. Several of these mountains uh, end in plateaus as opposed to peaks. They're not like the uh, the uh, the uh, Huleasa, the, 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 uh, the holy mountains that form kind of the the chain that separates the 
the coastal plain of the War Road from uh, uh, the uh, the vast desert uh, to the east of uh, the Ruwathi held territory. The Vorivana are, are much wider, and again, uh, they've only f a few of them actually break a timber line. But as you start to approach, you do start to see um, signs of not recent habitation, but definitely recent uh, movement through here. Uh, there are trees that look like they've been ripped up and kind of thrown across the path. Uh, there are large boulders uh, that have been rolled into choke points that you kind of have to crawl over and skirt. But you are headed straight toward this uh, this map location. As you get closer, what is um, what is uh, what is your plan? Sorry, Jam. Side question because my notes are in the other room. Um, but I had received that staff. The scepter of the recovers, ruling caste? Yeah, that recovers metal, yes? Yes, once per, once per adventure, you can heal metal damage equal to half of your wisdom. That's exactly the metal that I would have to heal. Yeah. Okay. Can I have done that? When we had to camp one night? Or... Uh, I will allow that, sure. Okay, cool. Perfect. Just, you know, for no particular reason. For no particular reason. No, I totally get that. Like, that's it's not paranoia if something's actually out to get you. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Digress there. So do we want to scout, I mean, kind of sh go in sneaky and see what's there? Or do we want to just run in and place everyone under arrest and <laughs> and remind me where was this map leading again um you don't know it's leading into the mountains it's the map that you found on the body of the cultist that you slew I mean, I'd say let's be sneaky. I don't, I don't know that we can take on a whole army that's been massing up here that we don't know about. So, I'm all for sneaking in, seeing what's up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just know I'm really bad at that, but I will do my best. That's that's all we ask. <laughs> when, oh. inevitably, you write the words on Mariette's grave, it will be <laughs> she tried her best. <laughs> Uh huh. Sure. Yes. Hey, at least I remembered that I had a way of recovering metal before we. That is true. <laughs> that is awesome. All right. What have I? Speaking of metal, uh, have I recovered any on this journey? Or am uh, I no, still you down only up? recover metal when staying in a bastion of law. So an actual. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Cool. All right. So. Everyone, give me your stealth checks. Honey, you couldn't have been one higher. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say, uh, this discussion in chat, I, I, if, if that is something that you wish to implement, I will honor it. I am not saying that is something we need to implement, but <laughs> it will be honored. Um, also, while they're making the rolls, if you like what you've seen, uh, you know, subscribe here on Twitch, follow us on YouTube, uh, check out Jackals, it's on, you can get it through Osprey, you can get it through Amazon, I'll probably say this at the end of the channel, check out all the other great shows that we run here on the Iconic Production channel, Becca is running an amazing uh, Call of Cthulhu game, uh, on Friday nights we have Josh's 5th edition It Gets Worse, which is perhaps the most honestly named D&D uh, &D campaign of all time. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can also find us on Tuesdays and Thursdays starting next week uh, back to a full-time schedule on the Ulysses International channel where I run Torg and Fading Suns. So, uh, what did, did all right, first of all, anybody fail? No. Penny. Or shame. You want to know what I rolled? Was it a critical failure? It was a 55. I mean... Oof. 
hurts. Everyone else succeed? Yes. Okay. All right, so you guys, uh, as you get into the... Uh, all right, as you get into the foothills, following the map, kind of skirting what seemed to be very... very subtle attempts to prevent people from going where you're going. Like I said, a tree that was just uprooted over the easiest path up a narrow ravine. Uh, a choked ravine which from the which from the path looked completely blocked by boulders, but as you got closer, because this is what the map says to do, you have to go up this way, you can see there is a very narrow way through that you couldn't see unless you were right on it. You start to hear um, uh, a rumbling uh, in the air. You actually feel it long before you identify it as a sound. Uh, every so often there's this thrumming that comes up through the ground. You can see little pebbles um, falling uh, from the sides of the hills uh, on stagnant puddles of water kind of wow, rippling as you walk past you can feel your teeth rattle as you get closer and as you approach this area um, the uh, the red moon uh, Kawa up in the sky kind of bathing everything in sort of a, a sanguine light uh, the full moon the full moon uh, of Kawa being red uh, a quarter of uh, Aura, the Silver Moon, kind of blending with that. You can see um, the tower and the door and the warrior in the sky. You can see uh, off far to the north, uh, the great star road just, just starting to kind of crest the horizon. And you hear a blood-curdling scream that is cut off um, in, a, in, a, uh, in a bloody gurgle. And you can see that up ahead, at the base of the Vorivana, as you kind of pass the foothills and start heading up the incline, you can see uh, massive shadows kind of cast on the stone of the mountains because someone has just lit a massive uh, bonfire. While you can't see the fire yet, you can definitely see the shadows being cast up along the wall. And then you hear another one of these screams. And as you kind of, I assume, unless you guys tell me you are stopping, I'm going to assume you are moving closer as you are following the map. All right. As you, uh, you guys are sneaking, most of you, um, you get to uh, a small ridge that overlooks this, this bowl uh, sheltered, uh, sheltered uh, from the majority of the western plains and forest by the foothills of the mountains. Um, you can see, well, you see several things. The first thing you see is, is a large stone door set into the stone of the mountains. Um, there are tents spread out around it. You don't see anyone, like no one's in front of the door. The door is shut. Um, it's gonna make a Tolkien joke. I'm, I'm I was right I'm, there with I'm gonna you. do my best to resist it. Um, and you can see that uh, there are, there's a large um, hide tent, like massive. Um, your guess is that the four of you would each have your own living space inside a tent like that. Probably for your animals, that sort of thing. There's several other tents. Uh, large, uh, just bedrolls kind of lying about. And there are several uh, stakes driven into the ground. And you can see there are still about nine Melconi uh, tied to the stakes. And there are four people, uh, two men, two women, who are, they come up to the, Mel, uh, the Melconi. Uh, to a Melconi captive. They cut them free and they drag them towards the bonfire. You can see there's a fifth person who is pulling a charred corpse out of uh, the bonfire. And as you watch, they take the head off of the dead Melconi 
oh. and they pick it up by the charred head and they toss it into the tent. You can hear the sounds of like something scraping along, uh, something scraping from inside the tent. And as you watch, they toss this next person of Lycos oh. on no. the floor. No, and, no, no! I wanted to die. Okay. We all right. So, Athenia, as you as you are outraged, uh, I, yep. you critically failed. So I you, did. I, I scream. You go. Well, you go to scream and declare. There is still yet one Melconi who will draw breath and blood, but um, the the ridge kind of gives out from under you, uh-huh. and in a tumble of armor, swearing, and very loud noises, you arrive at the bottom of the bowl as the other four, like, uh... Uh, no. I pop up! You pop up! <laughs> A oh, shining no. beacon in this bloody bonfire of Ryla's vengeance. But we are going to go into initiative rounds, because uh, in on the scale of stealthy, three of you fall in the very category, and one of you falls in the not category. <laughs> Alright, so I need uh, initiative rolls from everyone. Eighteen. Pink seven. What'd you get? I got 13. 13? I was just commenting to Evan's comment. Thanks a lot. Uh, Alice, what did you get? Uh, 19. Famia? 15. I guess I should roll initiatives too, huh? You don't need to. You really don't have to do that. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to put you to any trouble. I appreciate that. You guys they are. They can just die quietly. You guys are amazing uh, jackals. I have. I realize this is our last night playing jackals on the stream. We will do more streams of jackals because it's probably my favorite game to run. Okay. I really appreciate you guys playing through this five story arc. Uh, there is a plan for me to write this up and make this av- adventure available on the Osprey blog um, later this summer. So as I do that, I'll let you guys know. Uh, if uh, you are a patron member, you'll see it on uh, go up on the Discord channel. Uh, all Patreon uh, members get to be on the Discord channel. I will probably uh, release it a little bit early so you guys can look at it, give me some feedback, tell me what you think. Um, and let's do this. All right, so one of you gets to go first. Is it me? I, I, I feel like that should too. definitely be Athenia oh, since she just fell into the middle of them. Athenia, there are five five people here. Uh, they oh. are all armed uh, with sort of makeshift weapons. Uh, you can see several spears among them. Uh, the axes that they have really seem more designed to be used on uh, wood or, you know, charred corpses. So... Fair, 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 fair. There are now cool. seven captives. Um, also, um, I need everyone but Athenia to give me a quick perception check while Athenia takes her action. Athenia is going to cast, or who is going to don her right, uh, Blessing of the Goddess. Because. Um. Or, sorry, Ryla's Blessing. Um, yeah. All right. So, Casa Clash points. Who brought some dice? Um, who made their uh, perception check? I saw Tawara. I, from, did everyone make it? Yeah, yeah right, I did. You noticed two additional things um, in, in the time that Athenia falls. One... The stones have been painted with blood, roughly in the shape of three giants. Mm-hmm. Also, hey guys, we just have to wait for the sun to come up. We'll be fine. Both, both uh, times a Malconi was thrown into the fire, that thrumming through the earth happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Athenia, did your right go off? Did you don it, it successfully? Did. 
I did don it uh, successfully. Okay. So I am currently at a melee of 133. Okay. Um, with four protection and plus two damage. All right. I for assume. The round. And then every round I have to spend another two devotion points, or do I have to roll again? Uh, you just have to spend another two devotion points to sustain it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just attack the two closest to me. Um, I'm going to attack with an 80 and a 53. All right. Go charge it in. Okay, first one, 25. Okay. Second one. Oops, 79. All right. Okay, so the first one you hit. The second one, however, strikes back and catches you uh, in the arm. Okay. Um, the first one I hit. Ooh, sweet. For 11 points of damage. Nope, sorry, 13 points of damage. Ouch. Yeah. All right. Uh, they do not have any protection. These are, uh, I mean, they appear, I mean, they weren't obviously expecting uh, an Athenia to fall out of uh, the sky. Uh, swooping Most down definitely. gracefully uh, when you retell this story, like, like you know, on swan's wings of vengeance. No one sure. needs to know what actually happened. Uh, however, the other one does catch you uh, in the shoulder uh, for nine valor minus your your protection. All right. All right. Uh, they are going to go recover their flash points and come charging. Oh, did you get a critical success, Maddie? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, Famia, I'll tell you what you see when I finish uh, trying to kill Athenia. Cool. Um, Alright, so we're to start with the two in front of you, Athenia. They they charge in with axe and spear. Okay, I will attack back. <sighs> Stupid Malconi. Always thinking 80. you're up to a better challenge than you actually are. 83 on the first one, which is successful. Okay, and the second one? Uh, 81. Alright. Alright. Um, well, you successfully hit the guy you hit first. The other one still manages to score a line uh, past your defense for six points. What did you get? Uh, nine. All right. Uh, your spear catches him in the throat, and he drops to the ground as blood just kind of pours free from his mouth. And as you rip your spear away, the other guy kind of catches you. Your armor holds, but your arm goes a little numb as the handle of the axe kind of catches you right on the bone of your arm. Uh, the other three, seeing one of their friends dead and only you, um, uh, they dogpile you. The other three wouldn't be other... So there were the two who attacked okay. you that you attacked. Now the other three are... Well, actually, no. One of them runs to, uh, he spends his turn pulling the charred body out of, and he goes running for another Melconi. So the other two come charging you. Okay. I'm going to spend one clash point to uh, fight back against the first one. Okay. Or a nine. You rolled a nine? I rolled a nine. Okay. Uh, that guy hits you. Mm-hmm. He bashes you uh, kind of with the haft of his spear. Okay. And uh, Becca, mm -hmm. you will take six points of damage. Okay. But the rim of the spear catches you right in the mouth. And as your mouth fills with that salty taste of blood, you lose a clash point. You look so innocent as you say this. <laughs> I mean, I do. Do you have any clash points left? No. Alright, so that means uh, the other guy will just stab you twice. Okay. Uh, for four points, which does nothing, I believe. Uh -huh. 
Correct. And for two points... Oh, wait, hold on. For six points and four points... Wait, hold on. They fight together. When they work as a group, they attack a target who's within melee range of another one of their allies. They do plus four damage. So it will be a total of eight and six, minus your protection, respectively. Four and six. All right. All right. Now another one of you gets to go. But let me tell Famiya what she sees. Famiya, you can see that in the firelight, they are painting pictures of three female giants, all with a single shining eye. You can see that they've actually chipped away into the rock of the mountain and have put a stunt, like a, 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 a gem in the eye of each of their three blood representations. One is a massive emerald the size of your fist. One is a massive ruby of the same size. And the one in the middle has a massive diamond jammed into the rock. As the fire moves, you actually, it seems as if they are alive. And Maddie, you, or Familia, you definitely recognize the one in the middle, at least from the waist down. It's very similar to that, uh, that stone men here that cracked back in Crow Ryla. The other thing you see with your critical success is that the doors are carved. Um, with deep um, freezes in the in the stone. Um, and you can see there are two figures on either side. Um, they are facing each other and their heads are um, I mean, they tower um, the, to the height of three trousers. Um, they are wearing, uh, you can't tell if they're supposed to be wearing armor or robes. Um, they seem to be a blend of the two. Their heads are sort of a little bit oblong, and their, their eye sockets extend far back and up to a point about here on their skulls. And they are watching over something, and you can see that it looks to be a mass of snakes. Oof. So one of you gets to go. Um, uh, Jam, real quick, how high are the stones' eyeballs in these giants? Uh, they're about 12 yards up. So, are they on some kind of ladder to reach it? No, it looks like they were driven into the stone at that height and left there. Okay, so, but someone, like, right, okay. Uh, I'm just going to take an arrow shot at the ones that are trying to kill my friend. Okay. With my bow. All right, I was successful. Okay. Uh, so now I'll just that my own. I got a sixty-nine. All right. Uh, he's going to attempt to dodge. Osver, good to see you, buddy. Uh, he does not. Go ahead and uh, take the shot. All right. So that is eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. All right. You can see that one of them kind of pushes the other guy just out of the way so it catches uh, her in the shoulder but not as damaging as you would have hoped. They seem to be working really well as a group. All right. Do you want to spend any clash points to split the attack, um, to make another attack? Um, yeah, I would like to... How much is it? How many clash does it use to make another attack? Is it two? It is two. Okay. Yeah, I'll spend two to do another attack. Oh. That was also successful with the 28. Yes, Becca? 
Uh, I just realized I could have rolled with my extra die. You hit? To get crippled. Next, next round. Like, no, that was just my... Oh, I forgot. That's okay. I forgot to uh, power attack you while you were <laughs> defenseless. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I won't forget again. Um, Neither will I. All right. Oh, it is on, apparently. Um, <laughs> all right. So, from our, so uh, Maria, what was the other... What was the other uh, damage? It was a 28. Um, I got four points of damage on that one. All right. All right. At this point, you see something moving in the tent. Something large. Something which, as it exits the tent, towers over Athenia. Athenia comes up to just above knee height on this cyclops that emerges from the tent with a bundle of spears in its hand. It looks across the field. It looks towards the three uh, uh, bloody images on the stone. It looks towards the wall. And then it sees only Athenia in the firelight, torch of Ryla, uh, uh, just blazing from her. Uh-huh. It crosses the field of battle in two massive strides. And it brings its spear in a massive arc at you, Athenia. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, You have no flashpoints flash point. to defend. So Correct, it just sir. it just hits you. Uh huh. All right. So first of all, uh, it the uh, the Cyclops has something called Strength of Old. Uh, so your pro- it ignores three points of your protection every time it hits you. Oh, okay. <laughs> but because it's so old, it doesn't hit as hard because its joints are frozen up, right? I, I realize yeah. that is that is something that you are hoping for, and I would like to say that I appreciate just, you know, the Hope Springs Eternal. Reflecting on old age and, and what happens, and if he has a strength of old, I feel like he also has the joints and response time of old. And I mean, like, he's he's a big Cyclops guy. I feel like spinning around with the spear, he's gonna, like, overextend his back or something. Like, I mean, work with me here. <laughs> exactly. He's gonna throw out his back. He's just gonna have to lay on the floor in, like, an L shape for a while. 18 yeah. points of damage, and he ignores three points of your protection. He brings the spear and just, you see Athenia kind of get lifted up and knocked back Sorry. away from the other two. Did you say 18? I said 18. So 12? Okay, cool. Uh, but it ignores three points of your protection. So 12. Okay. <laughs> and you guys see that it lifts Athenia up and tosses her back towards the bonfire, but does not successfully get her to land there. Uh uh-huh. Tawara yeah. and Famia, it is your turn. That's cool. That's cool. Uh-huh. Is he facing our direction? Like, is his his big eyeball facing us? No, he turned around to follow Athenia to see where she went. You guys made your stealth check. The guards know that Mariette is there, or that someone is firing. The, uh, the Kyclops does not know that it is there. Okay. Um... Can I move... So I have a clear shot of his eyeball. Um, you can, um, to where you would have a clear shot at his eye. If you do that, he will definitely know you are there. Well, I mean, if I shoot, shoot him, he's going to know I'm there. Regardless. Okay. So, refresh my memory. Sure. I can do something and a right in a turn. Yes. Correct. Cool. You can move, act, and take a right. Real stupid. Okay, I'm gonna move. Okay. 
I'm going to attempt to use my staff sling to get him in the eyeball. Okay. But I also want to, like, position my... Oh, this is so stupid. Self near Athenia. Okay. So you're you're getting down in there. Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right, Fumia. He's going to take one of those javelins and toss it at you as you try to hit him with a... A sling. Okay. Do I, do I get a shot off first? Well, you, you basically... Here's the, the way ranged attack clash points work is if you both hit, you both hit. Oh, okay, cool. Oh. Yes. Okay. So, is there a penalty because it's a called shot? Um... So while I am experimenting with called shot rules, there are no called shots called shots in the base game. So I will say if you want to try and make a called shot, it would be a it would be a hard attempt, which is at minus fifty. Uh, well then I definitely will never hit it. So do you want to just make a regular? Do you want to do something different? Uh, well, I rolled a two, but with a range of 40, if it's at minus 50, it can't. Okay, so you want to just take a regular shot at him? If I can't do a called shot, I'm not going to run down Okay, so, what would, so rewind, what would you like to do? <laughs> the whole point was to try and blind him. Mm -hmm. um, can I instead try and shoot one of those gems out of the giants to try and goof up whatever they're doing with that? Uh, you can definitely try and take a shot at one of the giants. Uh, the stone eyes and the giants. Cool. So, keeping the same roll, go ahead and give me your damage roll. And I'm assuming you're not running stand? down towards Athenia. Um, other, other point of clarification, because I've never actually done this before... Is a Cyclops a uh, undead Rathic Skesh or possibly have a corruption higher than 12? Um, I You don't know the answer to the last one, but it is definitely not any of the ones that came before it. You know what? We're going to try it, because I've never done this. Okay, so I'm going to shoot at one of the, the, the giant's eyeballs, and I'm going to still run into Thenia, but I'm going to attempt Forbiddance. Okay. Go on ahead and roll the damage the on your staff sling. Okay. Uh, what, oh, that's not, I rolled the wrong die. A ten? Ten. Ten? Ten points of... of Stone to stone damage. Uh, which one were you shooting at, by the way? Uh, green. The one that has the most legs. <laughs> so the one with the diamond in the center. Yes, I'm just trying to knock it loose. All right, you guys hear the sound of the stone strike the mountain with a resounding crack, and the the uh, the Cyclops kind of turns around, looking right at the mountain, distracted for a bit. Uh, Famia, you come sliding down the hillside, plant your staff next to Athenia. Go ahead and give me the forbidden scroll. I'm going to spend a fate point to reroll that because I was so close. Okay. I really want this to work. Mm hmm. Oh, oh it goes off with a four <laughs> okay uh so this dome of light appears around uh athenia and famia and while the ki the kylops then turns around to look right at you but you do notice that three of the uh the people who are dragging the melconi around definitely mm -hmm. take a step back as if um like their skin starts to sizzle just a little bit one of them, however, is not affected at all. That's fine. Some of them are. I have a dome up around my friend. Hopefully, 
Mr. Kyclops is corrupted AF. Uh, Toara, you are up. Okay, so you said there was one of the... You said one of the guys was going off to grab another Melconi, right? Yep. Okay, I'd like to get down there and stab him in the face. Okay. So he doesn't grab the Melconi. All right, so Tawara sliding down the ridge, weapons drawn, comes right towards this guy. Go ahead and give me your roll. What are you attacking him with? Uh, my spear. Okay. Uh, 66, so that's a crit. Sweet, I got a 22. We're going to look at the mutual death rules. <laughs> All right, so this does max damage. So 12. So 12. Would you like to spend uh, two clash points to increase it to 18? Yes. Yes, you would. <laughs> no, because I need to do a right, so I need to save my clash points. Okay, so you do 12 points to him. Uh, he rolled a 22, which will do a total of... Uh, uh, you kind of come in, get him with the spear. He pulls himself down a little bit to bring the pommel of his dagger onto your temple. I do, uh, I hope, may the odds ever be in your favor, Tawara. Uh, you lose three clash points from the bash and take 12 points of damage. Okay. Do you still Oof. have enough clash points to invoke your right? Okay. So I'm going to... Do you still have enough to invoke the right? Yeah, I okay. do. Okay. Uh, by the way, you get a fate points for surviving a mutual death scenario. Ah, excellent. As um, does he. Oh, well, great. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm, I took three... You took 12 you points lost... of damage minus your... <laughs> protection. <laughs> minus your protection, but you also lost three clash points from the back. Oh, Right. Okay. Never mind. I am one short of being able to cast my right, which okay. is annoying. JM. Yes. Isn't on the mutual death rule you ignore protection? Oh, you do nor ignore protection. So. Sorry. Thank you, Athenia. I said that to start off. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you don't have enough to do your right. Right. That's annoying. But it is the start of the round, so one of you gets to go and will recover all of their clash points at the start of the round. I vote for Athenia. <laughs> I would like to uh, put my name out there. I, I don't like Athenia, it. Athenia, go first. Don't leave the bubble. I won't. <laughs> I won't leave the bubble. Um, I will... <laughs> I will spend those two devotion points to keep my right going. Okay. Another round. Um, now, the loss of the clash points, is that for the rest of this fight, or...? No, you get them back as soon as you return, okay. as soon as you get all of your clash points back. Basically, the bash maneuver temporarily stuns... Okay. Dropping your clash points for the round. Cool. Q, 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 Q. Um, with continuing, well, with sustaining then um, the Rylera's blessing, does it also cost a clash point? It does not. Sustaining only costs devotion points after it is cast. Okay. Um, great. Um, I. Would like, uh, Jam, so we can spend a fate point to get a talent? That you do that not normally have access to for the remainder of the scene, yes. I would like to spend a clash point to get the talent Adax's Reflexes, which increases a character's clash points by one. Okay, spend the fate point. I will. <laughs> okay. Whew. All right, so now possibly I can keep myself alive. <laughs> um, <I'm> great. <laughs> Guys, this is intense. All right, um, I will then um, kind of wipe the blood off. 
And is there still a guy in the protective bubble with us? One. Cool. Uh, actually, I no, have... because you were thrown away from that melee. So no one is in the protective bubble with you right now. Is anyone close? Uh, you would have to leave the bubble. You could attack. Can I leave and get back? Sure. I can leave and get back. You the can bubble. definitely leave and get back. I know. <laughs> Maddie's face is also spectacular. These are the faces I live for as a GM. Um. I mean, in theory, it won't damage you unless you're corrupted or you know. One of those things I listed off. But I don't I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm quite certain I do not have a corruption above twelve. <laughs> um, if I have corruption that I am unaware of, it is it's not yet to twelve. Um Okay. <laughs> I how far away is the Cyclops? The Cyclops is about uh, seven yards from you. What's your movement? Okay. And I can move not that far. All right. Great. I can move 13. I cannot move there and back. I, the Maddie's dome, ex, or Familia's dome extends out, so you can make it to the, the Kyclops and back into the protection of uh, the Forbiddens. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. And... You got to hear these noises that are going on in my head. It's not terribly helpful, guys. I'm inside the bubble, I can't save you. Um. Oh, wait, wait, back door. Back door. Back door. Back door. Back door. Roll. Don't roll. Don't roll. Oh, two of us gets to go before any of them go, right? One of us gets to go, and then it's all those small guys. And then one of us, and then the Cyclops. No. It's one of you, and then one of them. Then one of you, and one of them. They can switch initiatives uh -huh. just like you can. I was gonna say I could try and move the bubble closer so you don't actually have to leave the bubble, but if someone gets to go in between, then I can't. And I don't know if it ends on my turn. Never mind. All right, I will run out, attack the cyclops, and run back in. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh my god! All right, forty-five. You want, to, you want to push that? 80. Um, I will, I will spend a fate point reroll. Can I spend a fate point reroll? You can. It's fine. spent them for the adventure, they are gone. I mean, I was kind of glad I did, because I didn't die of poison immediately. But, I need you, know. you to give me a hard athletics check as you go running up and the Kyclops catches you with the butt of his spear. I'm and sorry, a heart is minus 50, right? A heart is minus 50. So with my athletics of 39, I can roll a 1 and be successful? You can roll a 1 and be successful. Oh, that was so close. <laughs> but, uh, no. No, it was not. <laughs> All right, so the good news is you take 14 damage as you are knocked 20 yards away into the cliff wall. The That's downside the is news? the cliff wall... <laughs> you get protection? What? You get protection, yeah. Okay. The downside is the uh, cliff wall uh, stops your, your, your traveling... You are knocked prone, lose all of your clash points, and will take an additional 18 points of damage, Athenia. Well, I'm going to spend a clash point.
point so I don't die right now. A fate point? Oh yeah, fate point. Okay, Athenia goes down hard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, see, mm -hmm. see, when mom says to stay in the bubble, you stay in the bubble. <laughs> now, if he hadn't rolled so well, I would have been okay. I like that Maddie has been declared mom of uh, of the group. It, it feels like a little bit of a bleed over from the other streams, plural. Maddie uh, is the mom friend. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Famia for the win. Okay, uh, well, Famia. The good news is, three of them can't attack you. Um, as they go, uh, one of them will turn to attack Tawara, because Tawara just stacked him through the belly with a spear. Uh, Tawara, would you like to defend? Yes, I would. Do you have clash points? I do. Okay. I got them back. Um, what is this, a dodge or melee combat? This would be a melee combat. Okay. Um, 44. Alright. Uh, so another 12 points of damage. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what does that look like, by the way? Or would you like me to describe it? It's entirely up to you. Um, you know, I, I, I stabbed him with the pointy end of my spear the first time. So I think I'm just going to spin it around and clock him across the face with it. All right. Uh, you see the, uh, you break the jaw, teeth go flying, and he drops to the ground. You you are right there by the Melconi. They are uh, dehydrated. They have been uh, treated with such disregard um, uh, for their comfort, for their hygiene, uh, for their basic needs. They're standing there in soiled uh, tunics and, or sorry, soiled, uh, yeah, tunics and, and sort of the traveling uh, skirts that they wear. Uh, they, most of them are barely aware of what is going on around them. You can see that they all have dark wine stains around their mouth as if they had been, like, force-fed wine. They all seem wildly out of it. Um, the other three, uh, one of them will actually go running into the Forbiddens to try and get a, lay hands on Famia. Famia, do you have a fate, uh, clash point you would like to spend? No, I had to use all of them to cast the right, so, and it hasn't been my turn yet, so I don't have any. Right. Well, luckily for you, uh, they missed it by one. Uh, so he comes charging in and takes a swing, and you manage to just kind of get out of the uh, get out of the way. The last two, um, seeing Toara, or seeing, uh, Athenia out, knowing that their skin blisters when they approach Famia, not knowing where Mariette is, and seeing that Toara just killed one of their allies, uh, they both go to attack you, Toara. Okay, I have one clash point, um, so I had two and I used one, so I'll, I'll try to block one of them. Okay. You get? 33. All right. So another 12 points to that guy. That's one of the ones that Maria has already wounded. Um, the other one misses you as she comes in. She actually slips on the blood uh, from the one Athenia kills and kind of wobbles in and kind of comes to stand right in front of you. It is now one of your turns. I'm out of clash points, so can can I go? Is that cool, guys? <laughs> okay. Um, so, first I'm going to just stab the one that skidded to a stop and didn't hit me. Okay. I'm going to try to spear her. Um, uh, oh, hold on. That... I only have... I got one less clash point. All right. 76, which is a success. All right, go ahead and roll your damage. Seven. All right, so she is still up. Would you like to spend clash points to power attack? 
No. Okay. Um, how far away am I from the Kyclops dude? Uh, you are about seven yards. Okay. Can I can I scoot like a yard closer to him? Sure. So you're um, only six yards away. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I want to stomp my foot on the ground and invoke Crack of Flame. Alright, give me the Crack of Flame roll. <sighs> Last time I tried this, it did not go so well, so hopefully it's better this time. And he gets to make an endurance check. Uh, succeed with a 36. Alright, defense of 55. Right. And anyone within six yards of me also needs to make it. Any enemies within six yards. Well, that's not great for these other guys. Uh, there are two more. Oh, they all make it. So, Crack mm. of fr Flame just means that the penalty and duration are halved. So, it's just yeah. equal to your devotion. What is your devotion? So, ten. Okay. And that's for a round. All right. I will keep that. Uh, so there's this crack of flame. They all sort of fall back a bit. It is now the Kyclops' turn. Uh, Athenia, as you uh, kind of are, are stunned, vaguely aware of what is going on, you can see this massive shadow through all of the haze, the blood in your eyes, stalking towards you as the rest of you see the Kyclops crosses the field, grabs Athenia by the head, and starts to drag her towards the flames. The other two of you get to go. Um, what's the distance um, between where Mariette is at the top of this ridge and um, her friend being drugged towards a bonfire. Repeat that one more time so I accurately understand what was... What's the distance between where Mar Mariette is and the, cy the Cyclops? Um, about 13 yards. Sweet. Um, okay, then I'm going to use two flashpoints for a precise aim. Uh, you don't have to do that till after you roll. Okay. Um, so precise aim I is like... if you miss by 5%, you can spend it to to kind of get gotcha. that little bit of an extra okay. bonus. All right. I'm going to um, attempt to shoot him in the hand-ish so that he drops Athenia, maybe? All right. Go ahead and... Uh... He asked while she was reading her book while the GM just explained how cold shots work and she doesn't know. Uh, uh, that was a success with a 73. Okay, uh, you hit him. Actually, I get to roll an extra bonus die just to make sure I didn't crit. Okay, so I hit him. All right. Um... So that would be three points of damage. Okay. Can I make another shot with my You can't make a points? shot at that person, and I will... Uh, when, when you split, you'd have to pick a different target. I will say, you don't seem to have pierced his armor yet, so making this mm. a overdraw might be a better use of your flash points. To I'll try do and, that. All right, add the extra d6 of damage. Okay. Uh, it was just a one. Okay. <laughs> All right, you hit this thing. The air, the arrow hits it, and he and he drops Athenia. Her head kind of bounces off the hard packed earth. And he's looking right at me now. He's definitely well. Uh, you know how there's sometimes some ambiguity if somebody's actually looking at you or not. Not the case with a Kyclops because they've got one eye, and it's huge, and it's intently focused on you. Excellent. So, Perfect. Uh, Famia. There's one person all up in your business, but the other the others seem to be outside of the Forbidden's bubble. Okay, so remind me how this works. So if I move, do they get to stab, try and stab me again? If you if you leave his combat area, he can spend a clash point to make an attack. 
Okay. And does the spell move mit with me, or is it a static point? That's a really good question. Who wrote this game? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wonder. Um, if you move with you, it and sustain it, it will move with you. Okay. <laughs> Again, stupid ideas. Okay, I'm going to spend all my clash points because so to sustain it, you just essentially have to invoke it again. Uh, when you sustain it, you just have to spend the devotion points. Oh, sweet. So I'll actually keep my clash. That's nice. Um, cool. Then I will sustain it. I will, and I will attempt to cover my unconscious friend with it, him so the Kyclops will think twice about touching her. Okay. Uh, thanks, Phantom, for being on top of that. Um, as you move across the field, you get the... You move... The, you can see the, the, the Forbiddens moving with you very slowly, but you do notice that it does not seem to push the Kyclops back. It does not seem to affect the Kyclops in any way, but now your bubble is enveloping you and uh, and Athenia. The Kaikos does not seem to be paying attention to you. At least at this point. That's, that's fine. Alright. Um, so if the dude doesn't attack me, can I also make an attack? Or if you make an attack, he will notice that you were there and can spend a clash point to... I wasn't going to attempt to attack him. Okay. I was going to try and take out another one of those giant eyeballs. Okay, go ahead and give me the roll. Uh, you didn't take the first one out. You crack, you like, uh, you hit it, but it's not quite dislodged yet. Do you want to attack the same one a second time? Okay. <laughs> um, no, I fail. Okay. Uh, top of the round... One of you guys gets to go. Um, I mean, if no one else, I will um, dump some Akalana resin on my friend. Okay. Um, and attempt another attack at okay, one of those jeweled eyeballs. Um, are you sustaining? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm sustaining. All right. So you were using Akalana resin on, um, Athenia, mm -hmm. which will heal her for, uh, a D4, nope, sorry, a D6 wounds. Five. All right. Uh, it hurts. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But Athenia, you can feel the resin sort of sear uh, your wounds close. You, your eyes kind of clear a little bit. Uh, it is now the the uh, cultist's turn, and so Jackals has a rule on morale. Uh, there's two points where NPCs make morale checks. One of them is when they have lost uh, just over half of their. Uh, their group, at which, I mean, you've done enough damage here to trigger that, and they failed their morale check. So these, the the three remaining um, servants of this Kyclops flee. They just drop their weapons, and they start running to the west. The Kyclops bellows, Cowards! I will track your down, you down. I will grind your bones into meal and make it bread, which will sustain me. But first, and he comes right at you, Mar Mariette, he charges you. By the way, I rolled that twice because I had this sweet fate point, and they still failed their morale check. However, he does not fail to hit Mariette. Uh, can I clash? You may. Okay. Um, I got a 19. 
18. Okay, uh, he definitely hits you. Okay. Um, um, all right. Uh, so he hits you once. For... Uh, 15 points. Bringing the spear down and then sweeping it around to try and stab you again. Would you like to spend another clash point to attempt uh, to clash sure. the second one? Um, no. Also that was now? A 92, so a failure, yes. Alright, so you I need an endurance check. The first one. 15 on the first one. Five on the second one, but I do need you to give me an endurance check. Endurance is here somewhere. Ah, there it is. Ooh, that's real bad for me. Okay. Um, no. Okay. I failed. Um, you... Um, you are stunned by this blow. Yeah, for one round. Uh, so you have no clash points... You will not regain clash points at the start of your next action. You will not regain clash points until the start of your next next action, if that makes sense. Okay. If you are tracking. Uh, all gotcha. right, so the rest of you get to go. What are you doing? Well, I guess Mariette can't do anything. She can't. She just can't clash. So she has okay. one action. So she can't invoke gifts. She can't invoke okay. rights. She can make an attack. She can run away. That's about it. And Athenia, you have six wounds, so do with them as you will. Laura, are you going to do something? Oh, yeah, this is a bad idea. Okay, yeah, sure. I'll chase the Kyclops and stab him in the leg <laughs> all right you make with the stabbing um what's my melee combat 78 which is a success all right you hit go ahead and roll your damage uh hang on hang on hang on sorry i lost my page um, I'm gonna spend a, the clash points to do an extra d6. Okay, what's the total? Um, so that was 10, and then an extra d6 is 15 total. That's a solid blow. You see Toara come in with her spear and she's uh, lacerate the back of the calf of the uh, Kyclops, who sort of drops just a bit. Uh, Mariette and Athenia, you are up. Mariette? Um, I... Have I noticed that Pamia has been shooting the gems? Oh, yeah. I mean, she's got a staff okay. sling, so it's kind of hard not to notice when she's... Like, huh, Wait. Huh, yes, what? And then, I don't have anyone right in my business at the moment. Uh, you do. It's the, uh... The, the Cyclops! Oh, he, I thought he ran away. Okay. No, no. The guards, then, the 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 other cult members ran away. Gotcha. Okay. Well, then I'm just gonna. Yeah. I will. That's not good for me. I'm just gonna shoot the gems because otherwise I won't hit him anyway. Rolled My melee hit. combat is bad. And then Athenia. Definitely some broken ribs. Some deep breathing. Something's hitching every time you draw a breath. You don't know how bad it is yet. You'll have to wait and see. What'd you get, Mariette? Um, I failed. Okay. <laughs> Athenia, what do you do? So, um, before I commit to an action, <laughs> um, in the, the, the stories of your... Mm -hmm. uh, of mine? Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, you, uh, you. This is Sanon? Probably not. Okay. 
He is not nearly uh, tall enough. Okay. Uh, then do I know if there is something particular that will bring a, cyclo- a Kyclops down? Or are they unkillable or what? I mean, they're not unkillable. They are massively... Um, I mean, they're, they're the children of the Elder Gods. They are... Strong of few and muscle, and their skin resists blows as as does bronze, and their uh, their weapons hit as hard as iron. So, um, the same way you would take down any creature of legend, uh, faith and perseverance and, and strength of arms and companion. They are also Look. incorrigible. Okay, um, then I will I will get up on one knee and don a right of the balm of the goddess in order to be able to breathe again. Okay. I was unsuccessful. Okay. Um. You have not been knocked unconscious, so are you spending the devotion points to sustain your right? Oh, I wasn't knocked unconscious? I went to zero. Oh, okay, then yes, your other right has it, has gone away. Yeah. Okay. I spent a point to right, right. stay alive. Yeah. Oh, I was like way past zero. It was <laughs> way down there. Um, okay. Uh, then I will stand up and aware that today might be the day my goddess calls me back to her side. Ugh, I will step out. I will I will thank Famia and then step out and and go stab an angle. Roll to hit. Seventy one. Sixty seven. Go ahead and roll your damage. I'm spending two clap points to increase that to power attack. Alright. Twelve points of damage. Alright, blood flows down as Athenia stands back up, scoring a line of uh, of fire and virtue across the side of the Kyclops. It is now two of you get to go, and then it will get to go again. Who would like to go at the top of the round? I don't have any clash points. You won't recover <laughs> clash points either this first round. Not this time. round? Right. You're oh, stunned. It's- yeah, you I were stunned. It, okay, gotcha. I thought it'd been my turn. Oh wait, no, you okay. you already attacked, so you would you would recover your clash points this round. That's, That's what I correct. thought. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Cool. Um, well, two of you get I... to go, so. Sweet. Um, I would like to. I'm going to give. Sorry, I just had the right, and then I lost it's it. Totally there okay. it is. Um, I'm going to... I'm, Athenia is right there next to me since she... Did you go back in the bubble or did you just leave the bubble? I left the bubble. Okay, you're right there next to me. That's great. I will um, try to do uh, protection on you with oh. my elements. Do you lesser elements. Um, and that is a success. Huzzah! Huzzah. So you get to add a point of protection. That cost me a... Let's see, I think that cost me two clash points. And my devotion points. And then I will um, shoot an eye out of the mountain again. I will try. At least. Okay. Who's going to take the other... Uh, you hit? All right, roll your damage. Yes. Well, actually. Uh, seven. All right. Uh, the, the gem shatters, and there is a large uh, crack that appears in the stone. 
and the Kyclops screams in rage at you. You can feel the hot, fetid breath just wash over you. I do a little dance so that he keeps looking right at me as I well, back for- away a little bit. And don't forget, you can always issue a challenge, which would have caused the, the uh, Kyclops to focus his attention on you to the detriment of reacting to everyone else. Uh, in this case, you've just pissed him off, and he plans to, you know, sort of flatten you. Um, who's the other person going as Mariette dances in front of this Kyclops? Uh, How tall is he? Um, he stands about, um, doing the math in my, I mean, he's about 20 feet tall. So he's about, oh, okay. yeah, he's about that's four really of you. Tall. Okay. That's really tall. I don't like that. Oh boy. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm gonna stab him again really hard in the foot and hope he gets pissed off at me. Okay, he is definitely going to uh attempt to attack you. Sixty seven. Alright, you hit. Um two clash points for an extra D six. So that's 16 points. You guys have done uh, quite a bit of damage to this this thing. He's bleeding down both of his legs. As uh, on his turn, he is attacking the gloating Mariette, who uh, contributed to the destruction of the eye of the middle daughter of Sinan. Mariette, um, do you clash. have flash points? All yes, right. I do. Uh, 76. So, wait, this is melee, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah, so that was a failure on my end. Okay, so he is going to do a sweeping arc, and he is going to oh. catch you and Tawara. You are caught in the backswing of this, of this massive spear sweep, and you will both take... Is this, this isn't something I can clash with, is it, since it's happening to Yeah, Mariette? no, it was happening to her, and as she okay. tried to defend, it swept across 25 points of damage, minus protection. And then half of that to me, as well? Uh, all of that to you, as well. It is a different, it is not the sweeping, att- this okay. is sweeping arc, not sweeping attack, yes. Okay. It's a monster ability, not a player ability. Okay, I suppose. <laughs> Famia, Tor. Well, Famia, you just saw this creature take a huge chunk out of two of your companions. Athenia is barely uh, on her feet. You and Tawara get to go. What are you going to do? The red light of the war moon kind of just bathes everything in this very sanguine light. Uh, do you want to go first? Mia, or would you like me to go first? Um, you would like to go? I'm probably just gonna go for a stone, because I'm not gonna do much... I don't think I can get high enough to do damage to him. Okay. Um, I mean, go for it, go for it. Go sling for a stone. Okay, I'm going for the green one. Alright. And I am successful. All right, go ahead and roll your damage. Eight. All right, you guys all hear the stone crack as uh, uh, Famia strikes it with one of her sling stones. Tawara, you are up. You mean uh, Athenia. Athenia? Athenia, sorry. Um, and forbidden okay. drops. I don't have enough um, DP to keep it up. Okay, so the forbidden drops. Mm-hmm. Oh god. Still got enough. Um, I am going to attempt the Balm of the Goddess again, uh, praying aloud to Rylaria, um, as we seek to save your son's devotees and those who would push back the chaos. Uh, bring your passion here upon us and fill us with your vigor. Um, going to attempt to cast it on myself. Uh, 
and fail the game. All right, cool. Here goes that. Okay. All right. Uh, then I will just attack the foot of the cycle. Go for it. Forty-three. Damn it! All right, that hits. Two. My dice now point. can't roll above a thirty. How many points? Two. Sorry, two clash points to make it a power attack. Okay. Uh, oh, there's a lot of ones. Um. You can spend a fate point to re-roll the damage if you like. I don't have fate points. They're right. gone. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, so, a total of six. All right. So, it is the top of the round. Who would like to go? Two of you get to go. I guess I can attack again. If nobody else has anything. No, I was just going to try and attempt to do the same thing. Like, I'm hoping maybe it'll weaken him, but... All right, I will attack again. Thirty-three. Oh, crit. Yes. <laughs> so I roll an eighty, and it does not matter. All right, Athenia, you come in, Ryla, kind of guiding your blade. Uh, what is your max damage? Uh, spending two clash points to make it a power attack it makes it a 19. All right, you spear the uh, the Kyclops's thigh, drawing just a massive uh, chunk of his flesh out uh, from it, and just this gout of blood that sprays uh, across the 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 field of battle, and he drops to one knee, uh, bellowing in rage. Who is next? Can I move away now? You Perhaps can. Out of his, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoot, I'm gonna scoot, I'm gonna scooty scoot back. I love you, ladies. I'm gonna mm -hmm. move back a little. <laughs> All right, who wants to go next? So you said he has fallen down to a knee. He has fallen down to a knee. Cool. Um, I would like to attempt to blow some dust in his face. Dust of Geb? Yeah. All right. So I have to invoke first, I think. I uh, know you do. You you invoked it before. You should have several doses left. Okay, that's right. You just have to make a ranged uh, attack. A ranged attack, which I succeeded. All right. He has no clash points left to defend against this attack, so. Um, Go ahead and roll your damage. Okay, sorry. I'm... I haven't gotten my book yet, because I think it got stuck in the Suez Canal. Um... It does 2d6 damage, which ignores protection. Oh, well, I don't Sweet. like that at all. <laughs> um, it's okay, Dan. It was only three points of damage. Do you want to spend a fate point to re-roll it and take the yes, better I of do. the two? Yes, I do. It ignores four points of protection, so... It was four points of <laughs> <laughs> Well, right. you broke even. You can see his face starts to uh, grow gaunt as the desiccating dust works its way into his flesh. Um, it is his turn. Uh, cool. With a bellow, he is going to strike out. Um, let's see what happens. He's going to start by targeting uh, Mariette, who is in his face. Sweet. I can clash. Maybe I can... Well, I don't know. Melee is not good for me. Let's see. Um, I got a 15. I got a 21. So he will Oof. hit you. Four. And don't forget, it ignores three points of protection. Okay. Um, for 19 points of damage. Um, I guess I'll spend my last fate point to not die. Just knocks <laughs> Mariette to the ground. You hear a sickening Great. snap as she lands on the ground. It is now Famia's and Tawara's turn. 
So is he still on one knee? He is still on, on the ground. One knee. He has not been able to rise yet. Uh, Athenia took a huge chunk out of his leg. Hamstringing okay. the giant. So I should have a little range because my spear. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to jump and aim for his eye. All right. If you aim for the eye, it's at minus fifty. Okay. Yep. I've got good melee combat. I'm going to give it a shot. All right. He's going to try and clash. I'm going to use a fate point. Okay. Because I got those. Um, okay. So minus 50 brings me to a 30. So that's a 26. I rolled a 19 to, to defend. So go <laughs> ahead and roll your damage and act an extra d8. An extra d8? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm also going to spend the two clash points to power attack and get a d6 as well. All right, Tawara, give me the roll. Twenty-five. What does it look like? I'm going to kind of spring up and over Mariette as she falls. And sorry, Mariette, could it kick off her shoulder a little, get the extra height I need. And it's just fine, I'm dead. I don't care. jam my spear <laughs> as far as it will go directly up into his eye. Uh, you feel it scrape against the back of the Kyclops' skull as you ride the thing down. It kind of rolls to the side with enough force that you get thrown and lose gr the, gra the grip on the spear. And the spear kind of moves with his eye movements as it reaches out a hand toward the mountain. And it cries out, Mother! And falls and lies still. Seeing as we're at 820 and we were going to do a a, uh, uh, a a brief Q&A afterwards, if you are okay, I will narrate a little bit of this. So, there in this field of battle, we're going to make some scarring rolls first. Because I want to see what happened to Athenia and Mariette. Because uh, I don't think the rest of you took enough damage to be worried about that. Um, when does that start coming into effect? Uh, after you fill the first row of wounds. Okay, yeah, I'm fine. 5, 10, 15, 45. 50. I need both of you to roll a D100, both Jenny and Becca, and add 55 to it. This is the most... This is a massive... Like, the only way this could have been worse is if there was a magical enemy who was hitting you with fire. 89. 89. All right, uh, Mariette, something in your chest just doesn't heal right. For the rest of your time on the war road, you feel like you get winded a little bit easier. So you will take minus one metal permanently. Okay. Becca, what did you get? 79. Um, the same thing. The, okay. the bruising, uh, yours is a little something in your shoulder that, that hitches. It just, it, it costs you a little bit more to lift your shield. But for the most part, the two of you made it out of here pretty, pretty decently. Famia leads the, uh, the uh, removal of the gemstones. And as you guys spend time here, uh, you notice uh, several things. One... Studying the door, um, you don't know who built it. Um, and the thrumming beh from behind the door continues through the night, but by dawn has sort of stopped. Um, but you all gain 5% in ancient lore by studying the constellations. These, uh, It looks to you as if these strange beings have locked away an Isilis of some sort. Uh, also in the Kyclopes, uh, 
in the tents as you kind of gather everything. Let's have uh, Mariette and Athenia roll it, because let's be honest, they took the brunt of this. Um, all right, so uh, Becca, give me uh, 5d100. And uh, Mar uh, Jenny, uh, give me a d. Uh, just give me a single d100 roll and tell me what you get. So 79. Five. Sorry. Sorry. Nope, go ahead. So you got a 79? Mm hmm. Okay. And Becca, what did you get? So I rolled a d100 five times? Yep. Uh, 12? 58? Oh, just add them all together for me. Oh, add them all together. Okay. Hang on. <coughs> uh, I rolled pretty high. Let me get my calculator. <laughs> okay. So, uh,. You also discover a bunch of ritual paraphernalia that seem to be consistent with what you found in the temple underneath it. And Famiya and Tawara, as, as you kind of look through this, um, it definitely seems to be, while it's written partially in Melkone, partially in Howells, partially in a dialect of Luwathi that you're just kind of able to make out, um, this this Kyclopes is the claimed to be the son of one of the daughters of Sanan. And uh, what you can tell is that they were sent here to tr from, the, from the west to try and awaken these creatures. Now, uh, I need both of you, I need everyone to give me a lore roll except Becca who's currently adding furiously together. Oh, I got, I got my number. Oh, what's your total? Can I see my lore roll? What's the total? 358. Okay. You spend most of the night hauling out 358 shekels worth of jewelry, gold helms, um, ornamental spears, torques, uh, necklaces, massive rings. It, it, it looks as if this camp was funding something large the Lycosians who you have rescued are clearly drugged but by morning seem to be recovering their wits and their senses they all tell you about horrible dreams they had of those doors opening and a multi-headed darkness swallowing them all most are pretty scarred and traumatized not only by being pushed beyond the limits of their own endurance, but by seeing their fellows night after night being offered to the flames. What did you guys get on your lore checks? I critically succeeded. Famia, I got did you a regular pass? success. So everyone succeeded mm -hmm. and Mariette got a critical success? Oh, you, you failed, Famia? Okay. Um... Mariette, Tawara, what you kind of put together is that the good news is you've stopped whatever right these, this group was attempting to do. But you know, thanks to Mariette's insights, the process of awakening the Daughters of Sanan has begun. While it has been stalled, Mariette, you know these are the kind of things that echo throughout the metaphysical planes drawing others of like minds. You'll need to return to Crowryla and warn Callisto. You have to take these people back. But for now, they seem to have stopped. At least, not the whole cult. You definitely get feelings that there is a larger hand at work in the west who's slowly turning their eyes here to the land of risings but as you all journey gather the supplies getting ready to head south you know not only have you saved the temple of Lycos but there are several seven other Melconi who would have died and who knows what the town would have looked like had they finished whatever terrible 
ritual they were attempting. There's also this strange door in the mountain. You don't know what's behind it. It seems odd. And it seems dangerous. It also seems old. And Tawara, you know that most of the rites of the Hashirs were found in places like this. So with that, as you begin to head south with five new advancements under your belt, we will bring an end to the Cult of Sinan and our journey through the Land of Risings for this time. We will be back uh, with these characters, hopefully, and with more investigations into the Cult of Sinan, the Lands of Rising, and exploring the world of jackals. I appreciate my bevy of jackals. Thank you so much for joining me on this chat. I am just thrilled that you guys have continually been here digging in, investing. I'm really surprised, Athenia, you uh, lasted as long as you did. I really thought that uh, you were going to be dead here. I was going to toss you in the fire and watch you burn and awaken a Nicillus from behind that door. I, I was ready. I was like, I'm dead. This is uh, this is cool. I'm glad. I, I'm glad I made a fighter to help my uh, non-fighting friends fight something. Cool. So did I, you guys have fun? Like you, yeah. You, when we when I offered up this game, I gave three choices, and everybody kind of said all of them, including you guys on Patreon. Um, so this was the adventure I put together. Did you have fun? Uh, you got to dig in a little bit more. Kind of, what was what was your experience with this stream and with uh, with jackals? Are you asking what's my experience with jackals? Well, just like, like, is there anything you guys wanted to share? Anything that you liked, you didn't like, that you want to like call out and highlight? Uh, chat. If you have any questions about jackals, now is a great time to ask them. I mean, I was just super excited to get uh, some new lore. Uh, I've kind of been digging into uh, most of your books and stories, and so to get to hear stuff about uh, the Melconi um, settlements was pretty cool. I liked it. I liked surviving it. Uh, <laughs> so the Kyclopes was designed to be a massive threat to a group of four jackals. Did you feel like that was the case? Did you also feel like you were able to mm -hmm. to deal with him with clash points? Yeah, no, I felt like he was adequately challenging. Yes, indeed. And we had two of you hit zero wounds and having to spend a fate point to stay alive. Yeah. Um, Toara took a not insignificant amount of damage. Yeah, I was, I think, halfway through my first row. Did you still in, enjoy the fight? Was it still dynamic? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I mean, is there anything you guys want to say before we, we bring this to an end? It doesn't look like chat has any questions, which is totally okay. Just, you know, I always like to play Jackals, so thank you for running this for us. Oh, yeah. no. Basically just, like, when can we play Jackals again? <laughs> Well, I will say, so uh, I don't I don't think we're going to be streaming this, but this summer I'll be doing the playtest of the next Jackals book, and I'm kind of thinking we'll just keep these characters if you guys are able to play and mm -hmm. kind of just continue it on um, in the West as you discover more of this cult of Sinan and, and what's going on in the colonies. So, uh, Maddie, you got to bring back Famia. Was it all you hoped for? Yeah, no, it was fun to, you know, I've, I've never successfully cast Forbiddance before. Like, I know it didn't do a lot, but I've never successfully cast that, so that was exciting. Um, yeah, no, it was fun to kind of work out some of the the rust and, and get to dig into some of the um, rights that I haven't been able to use before. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you all joining me on this um, this journey through Jackals. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy being able to run it. Uh, obviously, uh, I like it because it plays to all of the things I like in role-playing games. So thank you all for joining with me. It was a great time to be able to do this uh, while we were on the weird schedule. Uh, I hope that we'll be able to play more Jackals because obviously that's what I want to do. So if you like it, uh, thanks to Phantom and to JD for being our moderators. And uh, Phantom, thanks for posting the link uh, to Jackals in there. Uh, Fall of the Children of Bronze will be coming out in May. 
and Osprey has asked that I do another stream sometime that month, kind of highlighting maybe one of the adventures from Fall of the Children of Bronze. So we will probably be back with different characters, same players, more players, don't know. But thank you all for joining us. Uh, check out all the other great shows on the Iconic Production channel. We do the Iconic Podcast. Evan and I do uh, Exploring Glorantha once a month. Uh, where we just do a deep dive into the lore and world of Glorantha, uh, which heavily influenced Jackals. Um, Becca, as I said, runs an amazing Call of Cthulhu game with uh, Jenny as a new player in there. Uh, I run uh, Fading Suns and Torg on the Ulysses stream. Uh, Maddie plays in my Torg game. Maddie, Alice, and Becca are uh, three-fifths of the uh, crew of the Oh Boy. So we will be back to the Ulysses schedule next week, but I promise you, as we get more patrons, as we start keep growing the channel, there will be more shows like this. There will be more one-shots. Uh, Glorantha is on the schedule for this summer. Really hoping that we'll be able to do uh, more games, like I have a one-shot idea for Zweihander and Versus the Dark Master, more Jackal's Adventures that I know what to do with. Uh, maybe even a DCC funnel someday, because I feel like that would be fun to... Uh, to just show off you know the mass murder of zero level uh pcs and see who uh arrives on the other side it's called a funnel for a reason they say you get wealth by attrition everyone starts off with one cool piece of gear and by the end of the dungeon you have several cool pieces of gear that you have looted from the other characters that were on your character sheet so someday i would like to uh to uh run that on the stream but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay gaming. I am JM, your lore master. This has been uh, a bevy of jackals encounter the cult of Sanan. I hope you are all safe and healthy, and we will see you in a week with uh, more Torg on the Ulysses International channel. Have a great one.